Hello and welcome. I'm just delighted that you've tuned in for Hawthorne University's All About Alumni. I'm Paula Bartholomew and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Georgette Schwartz and it'll be your opportunity to ask her questions too. All you need to do is type them in or your comments into the webinar panel and I'll present them during our Q&A. So just a little bit of uh, description of what we're going to move forward here this morning. Georgette is a graduate of Hawthorne's Master Holistic Nutrition is our clinical program, and today she's going to share how she went from a 40-year-old with health concerns to a board-certified holistic nutrition with a busy clinical practice and a speaker at the 2018 annual NAMP conference, which she credits to her education from Hawthorne University. So thank you for that, Georgette. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm really excited to be here. It's my pleasure to introduce you and your presentation which is changing the world one stomach at a time, and I sure appreciate that. <laughs> so um, a little bit of background, right? Yep, it's my pleasure to be here. Absolutely, all right. Well, Georgette has been a nutrition and fitness educator and specialist focusing on complete mental and physical well-being for over 20 years. And what started as a passionate interest has turned into a dream career for Georgette who serves as the Director of Nutrition and Integrative Acupuncture. So through her own health experience and dietary and lifestyle changes, Georgette became inspired to help others and is devoted and a thorough student and practitioner of the healing arts. And I'm going to let Georgette reveal the rest of her accomplishments because it will weave its way through her, her presentation. So <laughs> I think this is really beautiful, Georgette. Oh, well, thank you, Paula. Um, so I had always just been. You, just let's let me start here with um, where we're going to go. I want you to start with just a little bit more about yourself and what prompted you to go back to school at 50 and get your master's degree and what led up to that. Okay. I was always interested in fitness and food and I was a personal trainer and an aerobics instructor for many years and I kind of dabbled in the nutrition thing, took a course here and there, nothing uh, formal. And then um, what I noticed in the gym was that people's bodies were not changing. They were working out so incredibly hard and they uh, just weren't getting the results that they wanted. And I thought to myself, it has to be what they're eating when they leave the gym. And of course, fast forward to after my education at Hawthorne, and it turns out my thoughts were correct. Um, and I left uh, the personal training world because I had an opportunity to buy a Gymboree franchise, the children's play program. And um, I thought, okay, this will be a nice way for me to take some of my business knowledge and, and my my fitness knowledge and put it to good use. And I absolutely loved owning Gymboree. Somebody gave, made me a great offer to buy it. I owned all of Palm Beach County, Florida. I had three locations. And then um, after that, I left the, the fitness and nutrition industry for a while to help my husband with his business. And then he and I unfortunately got divorced and I kind of sat there one day and said, now what, what do I do? Um, I had sold my half of our business to my ex-husband and um, was really at a loss. So I ended up, okay. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wondered no, no. if that led you on, on, on your own personal health journey. It was like, what? I mean, getting divorced and, and selling half a business and sitting there with an, a now what can right. trigger well, some things. So. Yes, it definitely did. The stress of divorce, of course, is huge. And, and um, But I started developing um, some real... Uh, difficult female problems where I was bleeding all the time and I would have about 10 good minutes a month and every doctor I went to said you have to have a hysterectomy and I wasn't quite ready to go through menopause in my late 30s 
days. Um, when I think back on my history, I always had terrible menstrual cycles and suffered terribly um, during my menstrual cycles. And, you know, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. And I thank God if I had only known then what I know now, I could have avoided so much discomfort and, and illness and heartache. And um, so for two years, I researched uh, my um, problem and went to many different specialists. And the answer was the same, hysterectomy. Um, so uh, I had read about this woman who was doing nutrition for athletes. And the football players traditionally have terrible Mondays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and most of the ones that were quoted in the article were saying that like their Monday was a completely different day. They were feeling great. They didn't know that food could be so powerful. And I thought, well, if they can, you know, play a hard game of football Sunday and feel good on Monday, she must be able to help me with my recovery from surgery because I had kind of resolved myself to the fact that I was going to have to have surgery. Mm -hmm. And I called her up. And um, she asked me to postpone my surgery for one month, and uh, I did. And the process began, and that is um, really where I guess the, the, the crux of the nutrition education started. Um, we well, that, it's a powerful lead-in story, and, and you know, what, you, you entered into a, a relationship with her, with this doctor, and, and personal experience. So what did you realize from this experience? Uh, that food was the most powerful tool we have mm -hmm. to correct health issues mm -hmm. of any kind. And um, that at the time, of course, I didn't even remotely understand what it was that she was doing and of course after my education at Hawthorne I now know it was food sensitivity testing um, uh -huh. uh, on on basically I call it food sensitivity testing on steroids um, and um, it was it, it was eye-opening it was life-changing as I see as you see on the slide after five days my bleeding stopped and I sailed through my rest of my life. I'm going to be 60 soon and I have all my female parts and yeah. look better and feel better than I've ever felt in my life. So so she did a, 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 a good deal of some pretty comprehensive blood work, it sounds like. And and then did she, she adjust your, your, your diet and what, what yeah. was it? Yeah, it was what um, what she did was um, a dietary progression, which if you don't know what that is, you start with foods A, B, and C, and you have a challenge list every day, and you can pick one food from the challenge list, and providing there are no symptoms, and a symptom can be anything from hiccuping after you ate something to actual weight gain on the scale, whether it be an ounce or a pound mm -hmm. overnight. And uh, you go through all of these challenge foods. Um, my first three foods I'll never forget were green peas, red snapper, and pineapple. <laughs> and um, not exactly a lot of, you know, cooking options or variety there. And then um, day two, I was allowed, I had a choice of four or five different foods. I picked brown rice. Because once you could eat a food, you could eat any derivative of that food. So I could have a puff rice cake if I wanted or um, cream of rice cereal and things like that. And um, I stayed on the protocol for two years. If I went out to eat, I brought my own food with me or I ate before I went. Um, and it was um, it was a really eye-opening experience for me and at the end of the two years when all my problems were resolved um, is when I said I have to figure out how she did this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so did that lead you to um, wondering about school? Yes, it. Um, I, 
I thought there's a few I options heard, out there. How did you do that? Yeah, so I started searching online for programs that would um, that resonated with me, but also that would fit my lifestyle. Um, you know, a child, a a, a job, because uh, at this point I had met somebody and and got remarried and was working in his office basically just to fill the time and 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 keep my mind active um and i searched and i searched and i searched and i loved the all the course outlines at hawthorne they just really resonated with me and i thought you know this will be the one that I think I'm going to go with. And I just jumped right in both feet and I enrolled. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you chose the Master of Science in Holistic Nutrition as your program. Was there anything specific about it that um, that you knew it was the right fit? Yes. it. All the courses and the progression of the courses, what, uh, uh, really what spoke to me. Um, I thought, oh, how basic. Okay, whole foods. What are whole foods? <laughs> and I mm -hmm. thought, okay, this will be a breeze and, you know, I will just um, be able to do this. And then, um, but just mm -hmm. the course titles, uh, learning how the body worked, learning how food impacted the body. I said, you know what, this sounds like something I really, really need to do and want to do. Did it take you just a little bit of time? <laughs> to make a decision or to finish the program? <laughs> well, both. No, I think um, you're, you're at the point of that you've made a decision here, right? Yes. Um, you jumped it, right it, in. And... Yep. I didn't really, it really didn't, it really resonated with me and I didn't um, hesitate for a minute and then uh, the program took me three years. Um, I suppose you can do it in two is what I was told if you have nothing else going on in your life. But um, <laughs> for, for me at the age that I was at, um, you know, life had really already started. I mean, I was knee deep in life. So right. um, uh, it took a little bit longer than I would have liked. But after that first phone call with um, my professor who was Karen like um, it just I just knew I had made the right decision mm -hmm. so and then while I was in school I also um, started working at integrative acupuncture and it was so basic it was just sort of eat whole foods and you know get rid of the junk and just eat real food and um, because my education wasn't quite what it is today. And so I don't know that I would have felt comfortable back then giving more advice than I was giving. But because of Hawthorne, I also knew that there was a whole big world out there that needed exploring in terms of additional certifications and knowledge. And I became just um, hungry. <laughs> just a hunger like I had never known for information. Well, you did well in Hawthorne. Um, you know, you, you applied yourself. You were beautiful as a student in, in terms of your progression, of course, and the materials that you developed there. And, you know, you graduated a pretty high status, didn't you? Yes, I did. I graduated summa cum laude. I believe I had one a minus through my entire three years um and, and i don't know if that was just given to me to humble me a little bit or <laughs> or if it really was a minus work but this truly i i think from my coursework and and the work i turned in um we i know that this was i had found my calling i had found my passion and hawthorne did such a good job feeding that passion so so um through th then through hawthorne you were as you got into the more advanced courses your your gi course the leaky gut everything like that i mean that must have you know coming out of the foundational level into the advanced level where you're really starting to apply that and work with practice clients um 
what was it like that at that shifting point when you were moving from foundational to the advanced level and, and starting to work with practice clients? Were you comfortable? Was um, did you feel like you had enough um, means to resonate and build rapport with them and and support their their goals of why they were seeing you? Yes, and what was so interesting was that when you really start asking your clients and or patients, whatever they get called, uh, depending upon the practice that you're in, um, you find out they all have gut problems. And, <laughs> you know, you ask someone, how's your digestion? Oh, it's great. Do you go to the bathroom every day? Well, no. Oh, okay. So maybe your digestion isn't so great. But without the advanced knowledge, um, once we really, you know, got deep into the GI tract, I was like, a bell went off. And I said, this is it. And of course, we now know, you know, 10 years later, that the GI tract is basically the sort of the root of all, oh, as Hippocrates said, all disease begins in the gut. So um, it didn't it was, it was just 10 years ago either. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. You're in, in our world, they've known it for a long time. It just took a really long time for the rest of the world to actually start paying attention. Well, and I think that Hawthorne really stands out, and yes. and it was important from from the beginning that that the the, the primary fundamental of Hawthorne was based around food, and yes. and quality food, and and why food can make a difference, um, physically, mentally, and emotionally. So, um, and and definitely, you know, it was like the the first advanced level course starts at GI very intentionally because the root is there. That is, there's our longest root in our body. Exactly. So. I meant 10 years ago for me, not 10 years uh -huh. ago for you. But yeah, and it, it was like, this is it. This is the, you know, the, 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 the crux of everything. And it was such an amazing course and it was so eye opening. So well, that, that led you up to, you know, as you progressed through these advanced courses and you came up to a decision of what you were going to, focus your thesis on so when yes. did you know and what what did you choose for your thesis and when did you feel confident that that's the direction you wanted to go well so um i got a phone call from my longtime personal physician who was a, an integrative physician um way back when mm -hmm. and um he said what do you know about the key i had called him and told him i was in school and you know going to get my master's in nutrition and that i would love the opportunity to shadow him or work with him and mm -hmm. he's like okay you know when you're comfortable and you're ready let me know but in the meantime i got a phone call from him and he said what do you know about the ketogenic diet and I said, I really, I had heard of it. I knew the premise of it, but I really didn't know the specifics of it. And I spent three days, I literally dropped everything and spent three days researching uh, all the information that I could possibly find. And again, going back to Hawthorne, because I had learned such amazing research skills, and you know how to know who funded a study and and how the study was done and did a pharmaceutical company pay for it or or whoever um, I really felt that the research that I found was spot on and it was so amazing to me the results that specifically brain cancer patients were having um, mm -hmm. because his focus was mostly stage four cancer patients at the time that all of this was happening mm -hmm. and um I, it was just amazing to me that again diet could be so powerful and so that was what i chose for my because i had so much invested in the ketogenic diet for cancer so it was kind of a natural progression to do my thesis on it so you went on and worked for for this acup for for this physician then right Yes, I did. Uh, he was very happy with my work. And uh, sorry, guys, I was on the wrong monitor. Um, <laughs> he um, he was happy with the results that he was seeing with his patients. And he called me and um, asked me to partner with him. And I did because I thought what an amazing opportunity to be with a fairly well-respected physician. Um, and the education that 
I would get being that he was an integrative physician. So, uh, you know, he had a nutritionist in his office 15 years ago before anybody even had thought of doing that. So, um, and it was truly an eye-opening three and a half years. Um, I became a real expert in nutrition for cancer patients. And he was also very much a hormone guru. That was sort of his start, um, was bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. So we did a lot of work on how food impacts the hormonal system. And um, it was uh, it was an amazing education. But because I was his business partner and he was the doctor, uh, I was saddled with a tremendous amount of administrative work. Yeah. And because our patients were, it was set up that the patients were in the office five days a week and I was always there, it stopped becoming actual one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling and it would be, hey, Georgette, what do I eat for dinner and such and such. So it was sort of a, you know, they'd walk by me in the hall and ask me a question and I was running back to my own office to get more administrative stuff done. And it wasn't what I wanted to be doing. It, I had left a business um, that I was the administrator and I really didn't want to do that. And I had heard that the acupuncture practice um, was looking to replace the nutritionist. And I met with them and um, we decided that we would form a new partnership and I would run the nutrition program. Well, I see there's a little theme here moving through of, of directions that you've taken and, and steeped yourself in and that served you for a while and, and then didn't. You were ready for your next step. So I'd, I'd like you to talk just a little bit about what your career has been so far because it's very rich and varied. Yes. So um, since I've been with back at Integrative Acupuncture since the late 2015, technically January of 2016, and there are so many people seeking alternative or complementary forms of health care that we have a very diversified practice. Some people come in just for wellness and then some people are really sick and they've been everywhere. So I get to see an average of 30 to 35 patients a week ranging uh, and with problems ranging from autoimmunity to stubborn uh, weight loss. And uh, it has, it, the, the education from the patients, um, because everyone has a story to tell and if you listen carefully they give you the cues that you need to sort of delve deeper into their problem um but uh, you know who was an alcoholic who uh had a traumatic um accident who had liposuction and their back has been numb ever since they had liposuction so it really is a very diverse patient population and I always use my training from Hawthorne to remember what questions to ask and what I should be listening for and that really is what I said two minutes ago that the, the, if you listen people will tell you what you need to know to to of course go further that's fantastic. And so when you, people that you're working with every day, is it, is it mostly, it's not cancer focus anymore. So is it a range of, of issues? That yes, come in? everything, everything. I, I, there isn't one condition. Um, what we're seeing a big increase in is autoimmunity. And we know from the research that's out there that it is the fasting, fastest growing population of conditions um, outnumbering cancer and heart disease. But, yes. you know, I, I, we have blood pressure, we have heart, we have cholesterol, dyslipidemia, um, dysglycemia, there's a, a literally everything. And I do still luckily get to work with uh, some cancer patients. So, right. Well, yes, that happens too <laughs> across yeah, the board. So, exactly. And, and in terms of... Um, 
um, getting the clients and patients that you work with? How does that happen? Uh, the girls have had their practice for 11 years. Integrative acupuncture has been in business for 11 years, and they have a very successful, busy practice. Most my referrals are from the three acupuncture physicians in the office. Um, I also have a lot of word of mouth referrals, um, but we do use, and it's only in the last year that we're actually using social media to really promote our services so facebook and and instagram um and the um uh the, I, with my background from hawthorne i then went on to get um some additional certifications and all of the ones that i chose have actual websites uh, where you can find a practitioner so you know obviously it's a much more health condition specific type of find a practitioner um, but that has been a nice uh, feed for me for patients um, because they'll go let's say they have MS and they go to Terry Wall's website and I'm a certified Walls practitioner so that has helped tremendously. Um, but we also, we host monthly presentations in our office on every health subject from osteoporosis to how to do a detox properly. And we encourage our patients to bring friends and family. And so that has become a nice way to increase the patient base as well. Um, I lecture wherever and whenever I can. Um, next Saturday, I'm doing a lecture at a fitness facility for moms and teens. And, you know, basically a sort of really basic lecture on what does healthy eating look really look like. And... Um, well, you have a number of, you know, um, really fantastic recent accomplishments. And I think it would it would help our students and grads for, for you to share some of the things that you've studied and applied and been certified in and, and are using in your practice now? So uh, in 2015, when I was with Dr. Rosenberg, I was asked to speak at the World Health Congress, uh, which is a 4,500 doctor mm -hmm. uh, conference. And there was a cancer fellowship being run during the conference. And I was asked to teach the doctors on nutrition for cancer. Um, so that was a really big deal. And then uh, I waited a very long time. And I think part of it was my work schedule. Um, but I waited a long time to do the board certification. And I finally last year sat down and did it and happily passed. Um, and it's been, that has been a big life changer saying, being able to say I'm board certified in holistic nutrition. Um, it really ups the bar uh, and people respect the words board certified. So they certainly do. It, it, it's yes. a very strong credential. And, and just so people know, this is board certification offered through the Holistic Nutrition Credentialing Board, an arm of National Association of Nutrition Professionals, NANP. Right, and I would strongly urge everyone to become a member of the NANP if they have not already. Uh, there's a lot of great education courses on the NANP website, um, and they offer the the board certification, and it really changes your status you I even still uh, stand taller <laughs> and, say, and say it deservedly proudly. right deservedly that's exactly right um, it all, and then you know what happened for you at NAMP this year as a consequence yes I was um, for the last three years evidently I had been nominated to be a speaker and I don't think I ever took the proposal quite as seriously as I need to and I decided this year that it was going to be my year Mm -hmm. um, it was a pinnacle moment for me, and I submitted a proposal on intermittent fasting, and because I've been using it a lot in my practice, and I've been doing it myself for the last uh, almost three years, and um, 
I submitted a proposal and I was selected to speak at the NANP conference and you know we just got back from it two weeks ago and it was probably um, as I said to Paul I can retire now because I it was it was truly a pinnacle moment however I can't retire because I still have stomachs to change so That's right and you can't retire yet because um, I asked you to come to Hawthorne's um, public webinar and right. student webinar on Tuesday and I think for a presentation. So you're still at it a little bit. All right. I'm so still at it. <laughs> um, like the rest of my certifications you can see on the slide. Um, I did the GAPS certification with Dr. McBride. Uh, I did first line therapy through Metagenics, which was really the first introduction to functional medicine and functional nutrition. Um, Terry Wall certification, metabolic balance coach. Dr. O'Brien offers a certified gluten practitioner course. And then I recently just did the um, Recode practitioner certification with Dr. Bredesen, who wrote the book, The End of Alzheimer's. And so it's Brilliant. really, 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 really good information. And I've already gotten two patients through the Bredesen um, website. So. Yes, you're kind of a non-stop learner. You're currently enrolled. Yes, I am. <laughs> yep, I am. I'm currently enrolled in Functional Medicine University. And what that will do for me is allow me to say I am certified in functional medicine. And... Um, you know, unfortunately, Florida is a red state, so I always have to work under a licensed healthcare practitioner. And um, we almost made it this year. Almost, we got to the House. We never made it to the Senate, but um, uh, it it, it just has, it's ju it's going to happen, hopefully. Um, but it's just one more. So it's not like I can go hang up a shingle on my own with all these certifications, but. I, the the knowledge and the being able to be diversified in what I talk about with my patients is so empowering and my patients appreciate it so much the fact that I can say you know something about well guess what while we're fixing the gut we're also fixing your brain and um, and wow how does that happen and being able to explain the gut brain connection and 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 things like that so um, it it and Hawthorne is really responsible for starting it all <laughs> Uh, I love being the spark plug uh, at yes. all times. It's just really yes. turning light bulbs on, and and you know, just a great example of thank of, you. You know, embracing learning and continuing with it at a very high level. I mean, yeah. You know. I mean, I never stop learning. I don't ever read a book anymore or a magazine. I read only nutrition and functional medicine research stuff. Um, I listen to a gazillion webinars. Um, I'm just always constantly learning and that would be my greatest advice to everybody is that you will serve yourself, your family and your patient population so much better. You know, knowledge is power. So I mean yes, I mean you're you're going to um the conferences um Institute for Functional Medicine conferences and Integrative Healthcare Symposium. I mean these are really high yeah level conferences it, it's, yes you, you yes. have to have a strong foundation of knowledge to to go there to understand what's being presented yep so, I, beautiful uh, that's a beautiful you know, accomplishment list just linger there for a minute it's <laughs> back. oh go back go back yeah. okay yes. um yeah you know the thing about ifm the institute for functional medicine their education programs are amazing, but they are really go geared towards um, MDs and DOs, and uh, they will not certify nutritionists. You would have to do the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy. They won't allow you to get IFM certified, um, but I still... I still go to the conferences because what I come up... The information I come home with is just above and beyond but you have to have the foundation to even be able to sit there okay i agree so. i can go to your next slide <laughs> it was uh, just you know it was just too good about you to to not linger there so 
Thank you. Thank you. So here's so, some good advice here that you've got coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we need to take advantage of everything that Hawthorne has to offer. There are great webinars on the Hawthorne website. Um, you've got skilled teachers to ask questions of. Paula, of course, makes herself available always. Um, and then take what you've learned, and if something really sparks your interest, um, you know, go further, do more, learn more. And I think we've all, depending upon how far you are in your Hawthorne education, nothing in the body is disconnected from something else. Everything works together. And what I've noticed in the last five, six years uh, is that many times we correct one problem and the other problems that the person was having were are also corrected. Um, I put this, see all different types of clients in there um, because not only is it beneficial to the world, uh, not to exclude people from your practice, but it becomes an education journey for you. And, you know, maybe you have a patient that you don't know anything about their condition, and there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know enough about this. Let me do some research and get back to you. Um, and and they're so appreciative of the fact that somebody will take the time and effort to learn about their con their condition. I had one patient wrote a, 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 a review of me and she said that she had been to 15 doctors over the course of four years and nobody ever explained her condition to her the way I did. And truth be told, and she knew this, when she first came in, I didn't have a clue. And I spent, I took the time, I did the research, and we're on a road to what is hopefully really good health. Um, and so, um, and then of course, you know, you do good and you end up doing well because your patients post reviews about you. And then word of mouth gets around. And um, build a strong community. Be able to find a chiropractor to refer to, uh, an acupuncturist to refer to, a, a medical doctor or a DO that is open to nutrition being an important part of a patient's wellness journey. Um, and learn blood work. Uh, Paula, I believe you're hosting a, a lab set, a series right now. And That's right. You don't want to, you don't want to, you know, we don't ever use the word treat because we're not allowed to treat or diagnose or assess, but, but learn what the lab values mean, learn how to connect the dots, and then you become a better practitioner by being able to look at a patient's blood work and say, you know what, this is dehydration. Well, tell me about how much water you're drinking and um, and the kind of water-based foods that you're eating. And, um, and then speak in public wherever and whenever you can. Pick a mom's group um, and make an application to speak. Even though it's above your head, it may be above your head and you know you're going to be rejected, your name will get out there and eventually it will come to fruition. Um, and align yourself with as many facilities in your area that you possibly can that might be referral f sources to you. Mm -hmm. Good advice. Really good advice there. Well, um, yeah, future, there's a door open there. Tell us about what your, <laughs> what your hopes or dreams and goals are. Uh, <laughs> you dream big. I would, yeah, I would really like to develop um, an online practitioner training program because I feel at this point that I have so much information to share uh, and get actually a lot of phone calls from practitioners asking me if they could send me one a, a case study and, and what I would do with it. And that's, a, a you know, obviously a really nice compliment you to can. have that happen. Um, but there's so many basics that once you're in practice and doing it and living it, that uh, I think people maybe miss the nuances, especially for new practitioners starting out. You know, you've graduated, you've got this amazing degree, you've hopefully passed the board exam, and you're like, okay, now what? 
Mm -hmm. And so um, having now started two successful nutrition um, programs at the acupuncture office and at the doctor's office, um, I really feel like I have a good grasp of what it takes to get that going. Um, I also would like be, to be able to reach more people, patients. So I think some online patient programs would be great. And then uh, to, I really, really enjoyed public speaking at the World Health Congress and at NANP this year. And it is um, something that I am going to pursue. I encourage it. You were um, very, you presented just beautifully um, and were extremely well received. I heard it not only in the ovation that you got uh, in your intermittent fasting presentation, all the remarks. I mean, you had three roundtable discussions on, on lab testings. And yes. circulating throughout the conference, I heard it over and over again. And I saw people coming up to you repeatedly to get more information to to have further conversations with you. So you, you really had a strong impact at NEMP and, and I have a feeling just about everywhere you walk. So I'm Thank keeping you. track of the steps that you take because it matters and you're, you make a big impression. Thank um, you, Paula. Thank community. you. Right, absolutely. So just um, in closing here, I want you to let people know how they can get in touch with you. Okay, so my office phone number is 561-819-0530. And my email is gschwartz, that's G-S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z, at integrativeacupuncture.net. And then our website is integrativeacupuncture.net. Okay. Great. Thank you. Well, just, you know, a couple last questions. You know, you had strong goals coming in Hawthorne and, and do you think that you achieved your goals in getting your degree and, and do you think Hawthorne is supporting your efforts post-graduation? Completely, totally on all of the above. Yes. Hawthorne was uh, the, uh, the, one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. All right. We've got a couple questions here. Um, do you implement um, dietary progression? No, I don't. But I do do food sensitivity testing. Is there literature that um, somebody could read up on dietary progression? Yeah, if you... Um, the the um, I would do a PubMed search, um, and I would do maybe a Green Med Info search on dietary progression. But the um, company that is the like probably the largest is it's Dietary Engineering, mm -hmm. is the name of the practice that does the dietary progressions. Um, but you know, of course, it's a her. Well, Sari has since passed away, and her okay. two sons have taken over the business. So, okay, all right. Thank you for that. And um, Lucy'd like to learn more about um, blood lab testing and blood values, and wondering if um, she's wanting to take a course. Wondering if you have a recommendation. So, other than the course that we're developing on um, not just blood values, but but, um, functional medicine uh, lab testing in general. Do you have one on blood um, testing and values that you like or recommend? Yeah, I, I really like um, Dick and Weatherby. Yes. Uh, he's been around a long time and he's pretty spot on. Um, so it's W E T H E R B Y, Dick and Weatherby. Yes. And, one, you know, we're using Dickens' book, The Signs and Symptoms of. Um, of, of health and Ill, illness is is on the curriculum now too. So. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So there's, okay. there's a good lead in there and, and support for as students are coming through into the more advanced level courses. Yes, All right. for sure. Is, okay, some good, there's good feedback. She's like, if you create an online program, Lucy, you will attend. <laughs> Big exclamation <laughs> point here. <laughs> good for that. Um, well, we'll keep really, it's okay. It's really been a pleasure this having this time with you, Georgette. 
Thank you. It's yeah. been a pleasure for me as well and an honor. And good luck to all of you. Learn, learn, you learn. Us. Thank you. I hope you'll visit us again at Hawthorne because you're going to keep doing good works and uh, we want to know about it. Yes, I definitely will. All right. Thank you. Um, one last thing, everybody, uh, if you'll please help us spread the word about our next All About Alumni, we'll meet here again on Wednesday, June 2nd, and we'll be live with Tanya Harris, who graduated from our MSHN program, and she's going to be sharing her good experiences. So until then, thank you again, Georgette, and I wish you all the best of health. Take good care. Thank you.